abortion happens every day. Millions of people around the world will have an abortion each year. But the majority of those people will never talk about their abortion experiences. What if millions of people broke their silence and told the truth about their lives and their choices? This is Melissa Madera in Northampton, Massachusetts, and you're listening to the Abortion Diary Podcast. These are the stories we share. Basically, uh, 2016 was a really uh, interesting year for me because I um, was dating this guy and uh, someone who I had known for a long time who I thought that I was actually going to be with for a very long time uh, just picked up and left pretty much. So... Uh, I started off the, the like the new year pretty happy, pretty good. And then in March, everything just, all my plans, my future plans kind of tumbled before me. So it was really weird because you think that you have everything planned out. You think that you have everything set. And then you're like, oh, like this is not going to work out. And this is not, now I got to, I have to reprogram, which is obviously normal. Everybody does it. And it's healthy to do it because if you, you know, you need to, there has to be some sort of interruptions for you to learn and for you to grow as a person. So, so in March that ended up crashing and I ended up going down this really dark hole of like depression, feeling very, um, confused with what I wanted to do and who I wanted to become because everything that I thought was okay and going to happen and everything that was going to fall through didn't. So, uh, one of my best friends came back from um, tour because he was uh, he's in a band and they were touring the states. He wasn't my best friend at the time. I would consider him now a best friend because we've known each other for so long, but we ended up getting so close when he got back. So that was really cool. When he got back, um, I told him, "I'm like, you know, like let's party." I was in party mode. I was like, hey, I'm 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 25, I'm single, let's party, like let's go get like fucked up, like, you know, like let's go do whatever we have to do. So he got back and we got in contact and we were like, hey, let's hang out. So we start hanging out more and more every weekend. It becomes like a normal thing for me to call him and be like, hey, like, let's go do this, let's go do that. So I spent my whole summer with him. Well, the whole beginning of summer from like, he got back in like April. So from like April-ish to like now, we've been pretty much together every single weekend, which is nice because he's awesome. But uh, in June, um, we went out one night and he decided to bring along his guitarist who I didn't know. I had no idea who this guy was. Um... We got out, we went out, we got wasted, we we drank, we went to this club. And I'm not I'm not one, I guess I could say I'm I'm more on the conservative side where like I don't necessarily like to I'm that girl that kind of like goes to the club and sees the like two people making out and I'm like, ugh. Really? Like you're gonna you're you're get a room. Like, you know, <laughs> like, oh man. I'm not that girl. Not because I, I just I was just never used to being that girl, so that night I was that girl. <laughs> I was that girl. I was like, whoo! I was on the bar. Anyways, so I ended up making out with his guitarist. I got super wasted. I'm gonna be very honest. The only reason why I made out with him was because um, my best friend was trying to hook up with the girl I was with. So they were making out, and I was like, man, I'm bored. What am I gonna do? <laughs> so, so I ended up talking to his guitarist, like actually like trying to get to know him, and then I just thought it was a good idea. To, you know, put my tongue down his throat. Oh man, it was disgusting. <laughs> I became that girl I hated. But so nothing else happened after we went home. We all went home and uh, we kept in contact. I kept in contact with his guitarist. I like followed him on like Snapchat and Instagram and the whole shebang, you know, you know how it is. And uh, we started talking a lot more. And then uh, maybe two weeks, we hung out the weekend after by ourselves he uh came to pick me up and uh then he came over and we were just like hanging out and it was super genuine it was super cool like he was really really cool and uh the weekend after that was the first time we had slept together we got drunk and then he came over and we uh 
slept together and you know how the rest happens. I made nothing of it. Uh, we had just, you know, in the two weeks that we had met, he was, we were talking a lot. We were talking almost every day. So I got to hear his story and, you know, he was going through some struggles. He had just got out of a four, almost five year relationship. I don't remember if it's four or five. And uh, he got single the exact same time I got single. We both got single in March. So we were both hurting and uh, like, you know, he was, he, he went through some, some stuff and like, he was just genuinely super, super nice. And it was nice to have somebody that um, was a lot more positive than I was because I, I was such like a negative Nancy and like a Debbie Downer. And he was very like, well, you know, like he, he was the half full and I was like the the empty like it's half empty he's like no it's half full I'm like, no it's half empty so we clicked for some reason like it just I'm I'm surprised we clicked now I'm not surprised we clicked because obviously I know him more but um so we just really really clicked and uh we continued sleeping together we just wanted to have fun and we saw it, like we we were having comfort in each other's arms, you know? So it was nice to have, like, that person there that can actually help me go through what I was going through, my demons and his demons as well. And then um, I was on birth control. Uh, I was using the Nuva Ring. But, um, well, when I started sleeping with him, I had got my prescription. What happened was that my gynecologist said that there's a seven day window. You can't, you have to be using protection. But for some reason it slipped my mind. I don't know what happened. I don't know, I don't know what happened. I don't know why I didn't, I had the papers. She told, I don't, I don't even remember if she told me. I mean, she, of course she told me, She's my, she was my gynecologist. You know, she has to tell you. But for some reason it slipped my mind and it just, I guess I had sex in the seven day window and uh i was getting cramps as if i was gonna get my period but i never ended up getting it so then like you know the month after i'm like wow i'm like weird like i just feel weird i felt very heavy very bloated and i'm just like oh this is so weird and i would tell him like i would tell him i'd be like you know i don't feel good i don't i feel weird like, I feel weird. And he's like, well, like, what's wrong? Like, you know, like, he's very organic and healthy because he uh, he had some very serious health issues. So he changed his whole lifestyle and became very, like, organic and active. And he was like, well, maybe there's something we can do to make you feel better. And I was like, no, like, I just, I just want to, like, lay in bed and I don't know, like, I just want to eat sweet potatoes. I'm like, sweet potatoes? Like, I love sweet potatoes, but, like, I just really want to eat sweet potatoes. I'm like, okay, maybe I'm just feeling. And then I counted my days, and I woke up, like, I literally woke up one morning, and I was like, I think I'm pregnant. I literally, you know, I'm just like, I think I'm pregnant. I went upstairs to my mom, and I was like, uh... Like, mommy, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling good. And I'm going to be very honest with you. Like, I think that, like, there's something wrong with me. Like, I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm pregnant. Me and my mom had a very rough relationship, but, you know, we try to make it work. I do feel comfortable talking to her a lot because she's very, like, against all of that. So because, you know, like, growing up, I was always doing everything she didn't want. She got kind of used to it. And she's like, she told me, she was like, look, I, 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 I'm pretty sure like I had a dream last week that, you know, I saw someone in a white robe that looked like you carrying a child. And so she, she started crying and she was like, no, she's like, Mija, por favor. like, don't, like, don't tell me this. Like, this isn't, this is not my mom and abortions. It's, no, no, like you're not allowed. So I felt bad. I felt really bad for telling my mom. I felt like uh, I didn't want to worry her. And I said, you know what, Maya? I said, it's just me. I'm like, I'm probably just, she's like, but did you use protection? I'm like, no, but I'm on birth control. So she automatically felt better not knowing, you know. She's like, okay. She's like, you're probably just not 
eating properly, like whatever, have some, you know, rest and feel better. And uh, I went to go tell my best friend. I called him after, right after having this conversation with my mom. I was obviously like shook, like I got, I was, I was shook and I was a bit like, oh no. And I told him and I said, uh, listen, like I, I, I haven't gotten my period in this long. I feel disgusting. I feel heavy. I feel bloated. I feel like my mind is just running and I just, I don't know what to do. He's like, what do you mean? You don't know what to do. Go take a damn pregnancy test. What's wrong with you? Like, what the, what the hell? He's like, but you're on birth control. I'm like, I know I'm on birth control, but like, I don't know. Anyways, I ended up going to get one that night. And uh, I called him when I got it. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, I, I got it. He's like, okay, we'll do it. He's like, you stay on the phone with me. And I was like, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Like, I'm, I'm scared, you know? I was like, really just... Oh my gosh, like, what do you even do? What's the next step? The next day, I slept on that. I slept on it and I said, okay, I'm going to do it the next day, which is actually better to do it in the morning. It's actually more uh, efficient, e effective, sorry, if you do it in the morning. I call him. I'm like, okay, we're going to do it. We got this. It's going to come out negative. And I'm, you know what I mean? This, this test is going to match my life. Negative as fuck. <laughs> like, that's it. And uh, so I did it and uh, I waited and I was talking, I was, I had him on speakerphone. I put it back in the package and I'm like, okay, I'm like, uh, you're ready to find out if you're going to be an unk. I'm at this point, I'm actually trying to be positive. I'm actually trying to crack jokes. He was actually not pleased at all. <laughs> he was not happy. He was like, just like, I'm like, you ready to know if you're going to be an uncle or not? He's like, stop it. Age, like seriously. Because you, you don't think these things are going to happen to you. You don't think that out of all things... You know, it's, it's, it's not something that like you can, it's something you can prevent, but it's not something that like when it happens, you can actually like, you're like, whoa, it's a slap in the face of reality. So, uh, I opened the package and he's like, and, and I'm like, uh, well, uh, yeah, all right, cool. He's like, okay, so you're good. I'm like, uh, yeah, no. Uh, he's like, what do you, what? what? I'm like. And then I just kind of stopped and he's like, Adriana. And I'm like, I'm pregnant. And uh, it sucked. I was like, shit, like, what am I going to do? Like, what am I going to do? I don't even know what the hell to do. Like, and we literally just sat there in silence over the phone. And he's like, okay. He's like, what's the next step? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I, I can't do this right now. I'm like, I can't do this. I'm like, I, I don't want this. I can't do this. I'm like, I'm not. And I knew it was with his guitarist because I wasn't sleeping with anybody else. I'm like, uh, okay, we're, I'm going to, I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to call some places and I'm going to set up an appointment, like an, an, an appointment for an abortion. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. He's like, are you going to tell him? I'm like, no, I'm not going to tell him. I'm not going to tell him anything. Like he doesn't need to know. He doesn't need, I don't want him to find out. In my mind, I was very like, I didn't want to ruin the relationship I had with him because we were getting so close. We had a very good sexual relationship. And I was, I was actually like a lot of selfish thoughts came into my mind. Like, like I was like, oh my gosh, like if he finds out I'm pregnant, he's not going to want to sleep with me ever again. Like, which is weird because like right now I'm going through like a crisis and I'm thinking about sex. Like that's kind of awkward. But for some reason, I just kept thinking about like what he would think. And I was like, I can't do this to him. Like, I'm not telling him. My best friend was totally against it. My best friend is, because he's in a band with him, they're best friends. So it was tough, very tough for him. I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm not going to tell him. It was a Thursday when I found out, I remember. And uh, it was a Wednesday or a Thursday. I'm sure it was a Thursday. That Saturday, we had plans. We had a birthday. We were going to a club downtown. He's like, uh, he's like, honestly, he's like, Adri, you have to tell him. He's like, you have to tell him. He's like, that that's not right. That's 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 wrong. He deserves to know. I'm like, no. I'm like, it's my body. It's my decision. I don't want to tell him. And then the best friend kicked him, kicked in in him, and he was like, well, if you don't tell him, I will. I was like, you have no right. I'm like, you have no. Right. He's like, I have every right. I'm like. I'm like, just give me some time to think about it. He's like, fine. So then Thursday, Friday pass. 
Friday night, I went out with him, actually. My best friend wasn't there. We went to a friend's house and uh, we went, uh, he, he was throwing like a jacuzzi party. And I knew I was pregnant. He didn't know I was pregnant. So we were sitting next to each other in the jacuzzi and I was just looking at him and I had all these thoughts running through my head. It's almost like the maternity side kicked in and I'm like, oh man, like, what the hell am I doing, you know? He was just, he's sitting next to me and I'm just like, this guy has no freaking idea, like, what the hell I'm going through. Saturday comes, we all go out together. At this point, my back started hurting, uh, like my lower back. And um, I'm like, oh no, like, I, I didn't even want to drink. I felt so bad. I felt so bad to drink and like, I just, I, I had one glass. And he even asked me, he's like, why aren't you drinking? What, like, what's, what's your, you're like, not, oh, you're not there. Like, well, I'm just having a rough weekend in front of my best friend. My best friend's like dying on the inside. You could see he's like crack. He's like twitching from one eye because we're trying to keep the secret from him. So we go out, whatever. I go home. Sunday comes along. And my best friend calls me. He's like, so today's the day you're going to tell him. I'm like, yep. So I call him. I tell him that I need to uh, talk to him face to face. He's like, face to face. He's like, wow, that's serious. He's like, we just met two months ago. I'm like, yeah, I really need to talk to you. So I went to his house and I sat down and I was like, okay, well, he's like, what the hell? And he got, he, he was, he called my best friend and he was like, what the hell? She needs to talk to me. I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm sure in his mind, he thought like I had like a, like an STI or an STD or something or something, you know, like, you don't like, like I said, you don't think these things happen like until they actually happen. So I sit down in his house and I'm like, listen, I'm like, uh, I've been telling you that I've been feel I haven't been feeling good, uh, that I'm not like myself and that I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm like my back hurts and all this stuff. I'm like, uh, you know, like, I just, I don't want this to ruin anything between us because we are, we got so close in two months and I just don't want it to be weird. But like, I, I feel like I, well, actually I have to tell you because if I don't tell you, anyways, I'll explain that later is what I told him. He's freaking out and he's like, what the hell? He's like, what's wrong? I'm like, well, I told you that I was on birth control and I am. But, uh, and he looked at me, he was sitting on the sofa and I was sitting on a chair across from him and he looked at me and he's like, you're pregnant. I'm like, um, yeah. He's like, you're fucking joking. I'm like, do I look like I'm joking right now? Do I, do I look like I'm joking? I'm like, no, I'm not joking. I'm pregnant. He's like, holy shit. And then I explained to him that um, with a seven day window and how I basically screwed up and that I was sorry. And then he looked at me and he kind of looked down at the couch and he looked traumatized. So his face went white. And at that point, like, because I had just met him, I wasn't used to opening up to people. So crying in front of people is not my thing. I try not to. And, uh, like, I, I felt like tears rolling down my face because I felt really bad for him, you know? Like, I'm just like, holy crap, like, this is ridiculous. So I got up, I ran to the bathroom to go wipe my, my eyes. I came back. He was looking at the floor, and I was like, well, this is it. Like, this is... And he literally looked at me, and he was like, you're pregnant. I'm like, yeah. And at that point, I just started, like, the tears started rolling down my face, and I'm just like, fuck it, I'm not even going to bother trying to cover it up. And he literally looked at me and he started laughing. I was like, what the f Like, and when he started laughing, I started crying. He's like, come over here. So I'm like, no, I'm like, just leave me. Like I'm, I'm looking down and I'm crying. And he's like, can you come over here and sit on the sofa next to me? I'm like, no, he got up and grabbed me and like pulled me in his arms. And he was like, mama Adri. He's like, it's going to be okay. 
and I'm crying and crying and I'm just like, what the hell is happening right now? I'm like, what the hell is happening? What are all these emotions? And we literally just sat there in each other's arms and cried <laughs> like a freaking, like a movie. It was ridiculous. I've never like, ugh. And he's like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm not going to keep it. He didn't say anything. He didn't oppose. He didn't say, well, this, well, that. He's like, okay. He's like, we're not ready to be parents. I'm like, no. I'm like, I just met you. We're not even dating. I'm like, you live an unstable life. You're in a band. You travel. I'm like, this isn't what I want. And even for myself, like, this isn't what I want. He's like, okay. He's like, then we'll call and set up an appointment for you. And I was just crying so much in his arms. And then the weirdest thing happened. Like he, um, I don't know, he like curled up in a ball next to me. I guess it was so emotional for both of us. We ended up having sex in that whole moment, which was one of the most emotional moments I've ever had. It was really weird, like really weird. But like, <clears throat> like I felt nice to have somebody not, you know, like you hear of all these stories of like people having, being pressured into this and pressured into that. And it was just nice to have the support that I needed. Now, I went home and I told my mom, which was a big mistake. And uh, she told me, she told me, she's like, you're an idiot. She's like, I, I, I can't believe that I raised a child like you. She's like, I don't want you in this house. If you're going to have that abortion, then leave. And I was like, okay. I'm not ready to have a child. I'm not about to start bringing somebody in when I can't even take care of myself. It's like, I find that's like, I find that not okay. I find that not okay at all. To bring in, if you're in pain... And you bring in another child and you know that child's going to be in pain. Why would you do that to that child? But that's just me. You know, obviously there's so many places that are against abortions and people fight, you know, for all that. But I just, I'm, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. And when you're not freaking ready, you're not freaking ready. Um, I'm blessed to be in a, in a country where, you know, we have the choice and um, like some, a lot of countries aren't. So I'm I I will take advantage of that and I'll you know step I'll, I'll take those three steps back to make sure I don't live the rest of my life regretting or in you know so I had to do what I had to do and I told my mom I said this is my decision I'm sorry I'm 25 years old I can make my own freaking decision you know I was 24 sorry 24 I'm 24 years old and I can make my own decisions so. I made the appointment. I didn't know how far along I was. My appointment was in three weeks when I made it. So I was still hanging out with him. We were all hanging out. It was in two weeks, actually. Sorry, it was in two weeks prior to uh, well, before, when I found out. Um, so we were all hanging out and then the appointment came along and I was in between those two weeks. He wasn't distant, but he was he didn't know how to cope with it. And I was a freaking mess. I would call my best friend at 3 a.m. crying, saying, uh, uh, you know, getting this flood of emotions. And at one point I wanted, I said, no, I don't even know if I want to have an abortion. I want to keep it. I guess I was, I felt so bad for my mom. And then I was reading things online and I was just like, oh my gosh, like, I, I can't do this. Like, I just, I want to keep it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, I'll pretend to get a DNA test and I'll tell him it's not his so that I can keep it. My best friend was like, stop it. Like, no, you, you can't do that. I was like, oh my gosh. My appointment comes along and uh, I went by myself. I didn't want him to come with me. I wanted my best friend to pick me up because you can't drive. Or take the public transportation for 24 hours. Something like that. And uh, I wanted him to come pick me up. And he was like, well, why don't you ask him to come get you? And I was like, no, I don't want him to be a part of this. And then he told me, he's like, it's not that I don't want to be there. He's like, I just think he should be there too. 
So then I told them, I said, listen, I said, if you want to come get me after the abortion, you can. I, I don't want you to be there for it. But if you want to like be there after, like that'd be cool. He's like, yeah, of course. No problem. The uh, procedure was, I went to an amazing clinic in Montreal called, uh, was uh, the Clinic Alternative. It was fantastic. They were super nice. It's like a home. Like you walk in and it looks like a home. It's really, really awesome. And uh, I was scared. I was really scared. And the doctor I had was phenomenal. It was just amazing all around. Um, I have problems with like anesthetics. They don't affect my body as they should. So I feel more pain. Like when they put me under, I, I still feel like they have to either put like a higher dose or like I still feel the pain. So they were prepping me up and the doctor was talking to me and and then it started happening and I was I was I was in a lot of pain, but I was okay. I was okay because no matter what the pain I was feeling, then in a month of the pain I would be feeling if I didn't go through this procedure. So that's what I was thinking about. And it was great. My doctor was great. He was great. Everything was great. I didn't have any complications at all. I got really lucky. But they put me to rest for an hour after. And I was really dizzy. And uh, he texted me saying he was ready out for me outside. So I told him I was coming down. So doctors helped me down. I had a hard time walking. But I was very numb. I felt very numb. I felt like I wasn't sure if... I felt like everything changed at that point. I also found out I was eight weeks pregnant. So that was pretty... Uh, yeah, he told me it was eight weeks and it kind of like kicked me in the ass. And I was like, well, it's one more month and I'm done the first trimester, you know? Like, that sucks. So he how he came up and he came inside and came to get me and helped me down. And I told him, I said, you know, I was eight, I was eight weeks pregnant. And I just like kind of lied in his, like I laid in his arms as I was walking towards the car. And he was like, it's okay. Like, it's. He, he wasn't okay with it. Like, I could tell he was, like, his thoughts were everywhere. Everything was messed up. And I just, I, at that point, I instantly regretted it. I was like, fuck, I should have kept it. Like, I just, I don't know. But maybe it was just, you know, it's a flood of emotions. Just a crazy flood of emotions. And then he's like, he took me to eat. He's like, where do you want to go on? So I picked out my favorite, like, ramen shop. So I'm, like, a super big ramen enthusiast. Asian. Ugh. And uh, he's like, we're going to go eat there. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, my best friend was done work at the same time. So he, we went to go pick him up. And we all went to go eat, all three of us together. And we spoke about it. We spoke about it. And he was like, how was it? I was like, it was good. My best friend was like, oh, you're not a baby mama anymore. And then his guitarist was like, well, she's always going to be my baby mama, you know? It was just like a very intimate moment. We ate. They split my bill between both of them. Like, like I got lucky because it was actually a really good situation. I had the support. I didn't have the support from my mom. Uh, but I had the support from them and it was good, but like, I think a lot and I'm like, shit, like I, I should have kept it. And if you ask me now, do I regret it? Yeah, I do. I really do. We still talk. He's great. Actually, we just recently decided we were going to make things platonic because we both aren't ready for a relationship. And uh, eight months down the line, it's like, you know, you, we, we, it's like we practically are in a relationship without the title. And I really love him. He's been like, I can consider him one of my best friends now, even if it's eight months that I know him. And I always told myself, like, best friends is not about who you've known the longest, but who's, you know, been, who's been through your shit and stuck by your side. So even if, like, we were in this, like, open relationship, no title relationship type thing... I, I, I still consider him my best, like one of my best friends because we went through so much together. 
And he's been so supportive of my life and everything. He never left my side once. And my best friend, well, him, you know, I can honestly say that I, I couldn't do a lot of things without him, but like, I got really lucky. I got really lucky. And my mom ended up, things ended up cooling out for my mom, but I ended up moving out anyways. Eight months down the line. Because things were rocky with her and she didn't, you know, she was still bringing up things from the past. And I was like, I don't need this from you already. Like, you know, maybe I sit there and I say, like, I regret it because she put so much shit in my head that I'm just like, but I don't know. I can honestly say that after everything, like, I do regret it. I wish I never had that abortion. But I'm happy that it was with, out of all people, it was with him. Because he means the world to me. So, yeah. That's my story. Thank you. You talked about how difficult it was to tell your mom about deciding to have an abortion and that she was not very supportive of you. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to her since about it? She'll bring it up sometimes. And she'll say, like, you know, like, let's say, like, I get into a fight with somebody. She'll be like, well, out of all the shitty decisions you've made in your life, one being that abortion, she'll always bring, she'll, she always brings it up. It's not like it's it's not right. It's it sucks. And it's she's constantly throwing it in my face. Constantly. My sister is uh, 22 now. She has two kids. Because she wasn't allowed to have an abortion. So she was uh, she got pregnant at uh, 18, sorry, 17. Gave birth at 18. And, uh, you know, she was very supportive of me. She told me that to do what I had to do because she couldn't. And she doesn't regret it, but it's hard. She goes to school full time. She works part time. She takes care of her kids. She's still with the, the father, thank goodness. It's been like three years. Four. Five almost. But, um... Yeah, no, it's just, it's rough. She just always throws it in my face and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like this is terrible. It's like a constant reminder. So I don't even tell my mom anymore like bad things that happen in my life because I know that she's just automatically going to relate to that shitty moment. So yeah. My sister was pregnant before, so she dealt with it before. I I knew that she was against abortions because of what she put my sister through. But the reason why I opened up and told her was because I thought maybe for once uh, seeing my sister struggle was going to make her realize. Uh, like in those South American countries, like, you know, people don't get abortions like often, like it's frowned upon. And I just thought maybe, you know, we, we've been through so much, me and my mother, that I thought maybe she would just understand but it just completely backfired on me. Completely backfired. Um, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's it. That's pretty much what it is. And you have to respect it no matter what. So, but for some reason, I thought maybe I could, you know, change that perspective in her. No, nope. no, nope, at all. Unfortunately. I think she like partially hates me for it. Yeah, I could think, I, you know, hate's a very strong word. I think I could say hate because to hate you once loved. I think she does. I think she has a very big grudge against me because of it. And uh, this is why I can't live with her anymore. I mean, obviously I'm 25. I should already be out of the house. So it was good that I moved out. But uh, she's very negative towards me, especially after she found This happened last summer, so... Well, the summer that just passed, so she's been super hard on me ever since. And, uh, yeah, I think it's because of that. I really think it's because of that. I'm hoping now that I'm out of the house and I'm not going to be seeing her often, she's going to slowly start to, like, just be a little bit more caring towards me. I barely talk to her. I talk to her maybe once every two weeks. I moved out two weeks ago. I haven't spoken to her since. I don't want to bring it up. I don't want her to, to, no. Like, 
just, like I said, just a bunch of negativity. Like, it's just ridiculous. I just don't need that. No. And if she does want to bring it up, I'm just going to, like, cut her off real quick and be like, nope, we are not talking about this right now. Did you tell other people in your family? No. Except for my sister. Nobody knows. I just didn't want to have to explain myself and my decisions again and have more people shoot me down and tell me that I wasn't, that I was being stupid and that I was being irresponsible and just a bunch of negative, like negativity. I'm already like, as, as weird as it is, I'm really a very negative person. I don't need, if it's raining, if I'm outside and it's raining, I don't need you to come with a bucket and throw it on my head of water. I don't need you to come and throw a bucket away. It's already raining. I feel the rain. Thank you very much. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's too much. I decided to keep it a secret from everybody. Do you think you would ever tell any of your other siblings or your father? No. My other siblings, yeah, maybe. Probably. Because if they have to go through it, they're definitely going to come tell me. So I would tell them. My father, no. I don't really have a relationship with my father. I have a very, very, very vague relationship. Like, pick me up, go run errands, drive me home. Haven't had supper with my father one-on-one -on -one in like three years. It's weird. It's very weird with my father. I would never tell him. He just recently found out I had like a boyfriend not too long ago. Like when I was dating before. He was like, what, you have a boyfriend? I'm 24 years old. Like, yeah, like, don't, hello. He's in denial. And I just don't have that kind of open relationship with him. So no, I'd rather not. I'd rather keep my things inside and just not have to explain myself to everybody. I don't know. I just think that like having to explain yourself and having a constant reminder of, of something that like, it's just, it's not pleasant. So why am I going to, I just like to bury it in the back of my closet, keep a skeleton in my closets. You know, it's better for me anyways. It's how I cope with things. I just keep piling up different skeletons until one day it's just gonna overload and I'm just gonna have to get myself a new closet, I guess, or something, you know? I don't know. It is what it is. You said that you have feelings of regret about your abortion. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about what that means to you, what that word means to you, and what about your experience you feel regret about? Because I, of my sister, she's 22 and she has two kids. She's struggling, but she's doing great. And I guess the mama bear kicked in and I was like, man, like I could have done that too. And I just, I feel like things could have been differently. Like I just, I think the only reason why I did it was at first I was hundred percent sure I didn't want it. I didn't want to keep it, but I did it mostly for him. Because even if I tell him, you don't have to be a part of this, you will always be a part of it. Because he was a part of me, you know, like that's our, it's our child. Um, but I look at my sister and I look at, you know, and again with my mom hounding down my throat saying like, hey, like, you know, you fucked up. Like, I just, I, I really think that I could have done it. It could have been, a, you know, and, and a lot of times the fighting that I, I fight with, like I used to fight with my mom a lot. I always told myself I, I'll never put my child through this never put my child through this and I just it was it's like a switch it was like a switch in me where I was like I fucked up I fucked up I, I shouldn't have I should have spoken to him more about it I should have maybe just you know anything something I know he didn't want to have a child he's not ready but to a certain extent, it's it's me. It's me. It's all me. I should have thought more through it. I just, I don't know. I, I, I can't even give you a solid answer as to why I regret it, but I freaking damn do. I just wish I could have had that child. 
I think about it often. A lot. And I tell him now, like, we get, we're more open about it. And uh, I actually told him two weeks ago, we were talking and I said, hey, I said, uh, in one month, in March, uh, I would have been, I would have given birth. In March, April, I would have been, like, I would have given birth. And he was like, wow. He's like, time flies, eh? Like, I bring it up often. I'm hurting. But uh, once you lose your note in the in the in the in the wind, you, chances of you getting it back uh, actually you probably will never get it back because the wind is infinite and it'll just keep going, keep traveling, you know. So this is something that I need to do. I just need to keep going because I'm not getting it back. I'm so blessed to have experienced this with him, and like. I wish that I could just sit there and be like, thank you. Like I have, I've, I've thanked him many times. And in the, in the eight months that I got to know him, we speak every day. I see him every weekend. Put in mind, like I said, we were in a relationship without the title. That Basically, that's what it was. So he got to know a lot of my story and I actually opened up to him, which is crazy because my best friend, I've known him for seven years. I, I met him like six, seven years ago. And I only recently started opening up to him this last year, 2016. And this guy just comes along and just takes my breath away. And just is, I'm able to tell him about my whole backstory on how like, you know, I went from like sugar to spice real quick. So I'm really lucky to have him in my life. And like, yeah, I really do regret it. And he knows I do. Is he open to talking to you about it? Yeah. He listens. He doesn't really talk, but he listens. Like I, like I said, I bring it up sometimes and I'm just like, hey, like, you know, or like a month ago or so, like I brought up like baby names. And then uh, he, he'll say things like, you know, you're going to be a good mother. Or like he brought up like recently, I forgot what we were talking about. And he was like, uh, he was like, oh, we're, we, we would like, we would have had such a good looking child. We're going to be like, we would have been good parents. I was like, yeah, we would be awesome parents. But like, it's complicated. You know, you're not dating the person, you know, you just met them. They're, it's, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. It's like you're baking a cake and you don't even know what the freaking ingredients are. Like, you know, you're just throwing a bunch of shit in it. It's like, it might work. It might come out good. But what are the chances? So, yeah. Does he ever share his feelings with you? No, never. He never brings it up. I think he's traumatized. <laughs> I think it, it, it fucked with him a little bit. Maybe that's why we're so close. I mean, besides the fact that we, like, we're super awesome together. But, like, uh, yeah, no. He doesn't ever bring it up. But he'll never shut me down. So, yeah. You talked about how you're still hurting from this experience. Have you done anything to work through that hurt? No. I just cry about it and let it go. Literally. I just cry. And cry and cry and then I let it go I mean I probably should seek some sort of help and you know talk to somebody and this and well you know this right now is helping me because I mean, I'm just I'm you know retelling my story and just kind of like and like I said like I I would consider myself lucky that I I went through what I went through because of how I went through it you know but no, I just let it go until it comes back and then I cry and then I let it go. It'll be something that, you know, will never really leave my side. And, and it's crazy because it's, it's, I'm never going to forget about him, which sucks in a way, in a way, no, because if something were to happen to us and we would just stop talking, 
he's just going to be one of those that's always going to linger in the back of my head. So, yeah. It sucks. Why do you want to share your story? People need to be okay with their demons that they're hiding inside. People need to know that it's okay and that it's gonna be okay. Um, I've read so many stories of like women committing suicide because they couldn't cope with the fact that, you know, they lost a child or had an abortion or this and that, and it just falls under the whole depression field. And the more you talk about things, as hard as it is, the more it's easier for you to cope as a person, as an individual, and accept what happened. So why do I want to share my story? Because not only do I want people to understand that it's okay, but I need to understand that it's okay. Because I haven't yet. So this is kind of like my little mini support system. And I get to, you know, just sit here and talk about something that really fucks with me, you know. I think that it's important for people to be aware and to understand that this is a very common thing. And that, you know, like you just have to understand and deal with it. You make the right like decision, you make the right choice. If you want to have an abortion, then you need to understand that this is what's going to happen after. And this is what, this is the procedure and this is how it plays out. People need to know it's not, it's a, it, people need to know it's okay. People need to know that they're not alone. I need to know I'm not alone. And I know I'm not, so it's cool. You talked about needing ways to cope. Is there anything that you would have liked after your abortion to help you cope with your abortion experience? No, I don't think there was anything that was really going to help me. I had his support. We still continued sleeping together, which was which is funny. It was weird. I thought he was going to like be freaked out. If anything, it brought us closer. You know, they say not to leave your, your happiness in somebody else's arms, but if he wasn't there to, to, to help me cope with it, to help me be okay with it, I, I don't know how I would have done it. Because he really, really did make it okay for me. I had the support. I had my life jacket and maybe you know like maybe that's why like I regret it maybe I regret it because I know I, I see the outcome and I'm like shit like we could have been awesome parents because you know the way he is and from what I've seen obviously down the line I've gotten to know him a lot so he's freaking he's fantastic he's his heart of gold is you know, could light up uh, the darkest days. But, um, yeah. I I don't think there's anything else. I, 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 I don't know. I think I'm always going to have those feelings of regret, no matter what. I think I just need to learn to accept that it's okay. How do you feel sharing your story in this way? I feel good. I'm happy. I'm happy that I haven't been, I haven't said this story in a very long time. So actually I haven't said it to anybody except like my roommate knows, but I didn't tell her in details. So it feels good to talk about the details because I'm just kind of reminding myself that like, hey, eight months on the line, you're actually okay. It could have been worse. I could have been a lot more, could have affected me a lot more negative, like ne negatively, but which it, in a way it did, because like I said, I keep 
it's it's a it's a skeleton in the back of my closet and I, I sometimes I wake up and it's like a a feeling I get like a feeling on my chest like a pressure on my chest kind of like the anxiety creeps up on me and I'm like damn it like but as far as uh it feels really good to just have people listen and know that I'm like I said that I'm not the only one it's sad it's really sad but it is what it is and we are who we are yeah I just, I just want everybody to understand and to know that, you know, like at the end of the day, it's okay to feel whatever you're feeling. Don't let it overcome you. Where there's a will, there's a way. You can always find the help you need if it's really drowning you. Uh, like, you know, I still drown in it a little bit. I do. Like I said, I think about it all the time. Not all the time, but I regret it. I do. But I, I will never let that overcome who I am and my purpose in this life because I still need to keep going. If I stopped one life, why am I going to stop my own as well? Like, I need to keep going. So it's just a matter of trying to smile and keep walking. And don't ever be, don't ever feel bad for crying. Don't. What would you say to someone who's in the process of choosing to get an abortion? Whatever your answer is, I understand. That's what I would say. Mm. You know, these are not decisions that other people can make for you. And even if you impose and impose and impose the way my mother did, it's, it's, it's you. It's all you. So whatever choice you make, I understand. I wish somebody told me that. This is Melissa, and thanks again for listening. You can continue to listen to our stories online through our website by subscribing on iTunes or SoundCloud or your favorite podcast app. And if you rate and review our podcast on iTunes, it helps new listeners find us by boosting our iTunes ranking. And remember, The Abortion Diary needs your support. Help The Abortion Diary continue its work and share our stories by donating. And consider supporting us with a monthly gift. I'll be back next week with a new story. New stories are posted every Tuesday. Until then, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. Listen for us next week.